we're talking about did Jesus have a biological father? We know what the Christian creeds and we understand what church history has to say about this issue. But is there a potential cover-up for something deeper going on? You know, I'll give an example. And in your book, you talk about, did Jesus have a biological father? Anyone who's watching, please, you must get the Jesus dynasty. I'm telling you, it's fantastic, even on Audible. But my wife has always told me for 10, 12 years, if I get pregnant and I say that it wasn't by a man, you better second guess that. And I'm, of course, I wouldn't uh, think that this was from a spirit or something, but Tell us about Jesus and what were some of the early issues on this topic? Well, part of the issue with that is uh, what your presuppositions are about the world. So someone who has faith in the virgin birth, it's usually called, it's, it's, it's really uh, the virgin conception. It's not necessarily the birth, but that Mary got pregnant, but not from a man. That's more of a theological position that, of course, millions hold. And I would personally say that's more mythological. You know, we have many tales of Greco-Roman heroes that are begotten by gods, but we don't really go investigating, you know, who is the real father. But with Jesus, he is a historical figure, I believe. I believe he existed, he lived. And I think all humans have fathers by definition. So that's my presupposition that I start with, and I want to make that clear that that's my, my view. I don't think bodies rise from the dead, and I don't think people get uh, pregnant without insemination, to be frank. So this requires us to have to say, if that's the case, and I agree with you, right. who, what? We, we want what, to know. what might we know about it? Right. Yeah. I think if I was filling out Jesus's birth certificate, I would put father unknown because I'm not certain about it, but I'm going to present to you an idea that I put in the book. I have a chapter called The Unknown Father of Jesus. So unknown, he's not certainly named in the New Testament, but we do have other materials. But I want to start more with the New Testament, even though it doesn't name the father, the possibilities are rather simple. Usually, I think most of my colleagues would say, you know, don't go looking for another man. It's essentially Joseph. And then the mythology of the virgin conception begins to develop and covers over. But she's married to Joseph, and he's the father. Uh, obviously, historically, that would be the answer most would give. Or he didn't have a biological father, which is the position of theology and faith and the part of the confession of the church and the Apostles' Creed. But I think we get hints of it in the New Testament. The first and earliest hint is Mark 6, verse 3, where Jesus comes back to his hometown, probably Nazareth or the region of the Galilee, and people are skeptical because he's been out doing all these wonderful things and, you know, a prophet has no honor in his own home or his own country. And the townspeople begin to say, is this not Jesus, the son of Mary? Now, when you say son of Mary, that is a red flag because it should be the son of Joseph. And he is called the son of Joseph a few times in the New Testament. But Mark is a really early. I think it's the first gospel. And for him to put Jesus, son of Mary, is really a flag. And what it tells you is the father's not going to be mentioned, you know, whoever it might have been, assuming there was one. Otherwise, if it's Joseph, you'd say Jesus, son of Joseph. So what is that about? Now, the expert on names in our field is Tal Ilan, T-A-L. She's Israeli and also, I think she teaches in Berlin as well. And she's argued that if a, a, a male takes the mother's name, it's because of prominence you know, that you would, the mother is so prominent. And I like that. You know, I'm working on a book already published in f French. It'll come out in English, I hope, later this year on Mary. So I'm all glad for Jesus to be son of Mary because Mary is so important. And I think she was. But I think in that context, uh, it might indicate something more. If that's all I had to go on, I'd probably go with Dr. Elan's idea that it just means he's really great. 
Might I mention something? That, sure, go ahead. Uh, Steve, Anytime. Dr. Yeah. Steve Mason mentioned mm -hmm. this in an episode, and it was in passing, so I knew it was valuable to bring this up. I noticed in the Roman Empire, when the Romans were in control, oftentimes it went from patriarchal, which is the typical motif biblically. Sure. Patriarch, patriarch, patriarch. Once in a while, a woman's mentioned, but it's not a... Lineage usually is patriarchal. Even the genealogies, which we're going to get into, I'm sure, mm -hmm. are. But he said in this time, when war happened... And this is historical, mm -hmm. so we can't get around this, and you're going to get to this, and you do in your book. But that Romans, for example, uh, would or people, even if it wasn't Romans, let's just say, would rape women who were in these destitute-type situations, and they can't say who the father is. So they would say, we know who popped him out, mm -hmm. so we can know that that's a child of the mother, but we mm -hmm. can't know... Yeah that the child of the father type thing is, is usually why they would come up with this tradition. This is from Steve Mason, and I thought, right, possibly. And, and I think in Judaism, too, uh, years ago when I would fly to Israel, you'd fill out a landing card. It's not required anymore. It's all electronic. But you know what it would say? It would have your name legally, and it'd say father's name, not mother. You had to put the father's name. And in a, a trial in Israel, whenever you testify, so you have your name, like what was your father? What's your father's first name? Michael. So you would be basically Derek, son of Michael. See? So if you don't say that, it, it kind of sticks out. What are you really saying? I personally don't think it's rape. Uh, we can discuss that. Uh, mm -hmm. Jane Schauberg has a book called The Illegitimacy of Jesus, in which she argues that, obviously pretty controversial. It's a great book worth reading. I recommend it. I mention it in my book and evaluate it. But I think we know more. First of all, there is a passage in the Gospel of John where Jesus' enemies, uh, I think it was the Pharisees, as I recall. I think it's in John chapter 8. He's talking about, you're of your father, the devil, kind of denouncing them. And that could be John's theology, but we still have the text. And Jesus uh, is, they want to answer, they want to say something back, and they say, we weren't born of fornication. Now, you don't say that unless something is going around, something has been circulated. And by the time the Gospel of John is written, it's widespread enough that John could even put it in, even if it's not historically, you know, a quote from Jesus. But the charge Weren't you born of fornication? Also, you're the son of a Samaritan. Now, I'll get to that later when I suggest who the father might be. So remind me to do that, to explain the Samaritan. Those are kind of together. We're not born of fornication, and you're the son of a Samaritan. So they're actually telling us something there in terms of an assertion. So I think Jesus had a biological father. I think there are hints of it. Um, there are also other little things in the Gospels that aren't maybe as direct, but Paul, for example, says Jesus, born of a woman. Well, all humans are born of women, so you could say, well, that's nothing. But just the idea that he says born of a woman means he's a human being, but he doesn't put a name in, you know. And really, if, if he's the Davidic Messiah, and Paul does say in Romans 1, Verse 4, I think, that he's descended from David according to the flesh. So why in Galatians doesn't he just say, Jesus, son of Joseph? Why does he say born of a woman? I know he means human. I think there might be more there. Hmm. And in the Gospel of Thomas, there is a, a strange saying about he who knows his father and mother but is still called illegitimate or it's in Coptic, so the word is different. But, you know, like I know my mother and father, but you're still calling me illegitimate. Um, so there are hints along the way. You also point out in your book that there are places, if I'm not mistaken, it is in Mark, where Mark says, son of Mary, isn't this the son of Mary? Mm -hmm. Later redactors add and Joseph. So there's already textual Yeah, it's develop. more Matthew. Oh, it's Matthew. See, okay. Matthew, that's an indication that it's sensitive. Matthew sees that, and he puts in Joseph instead of Mary. He's like, 
What is this? I'm not going to leave that for my Jewish readers, you see. So the fact that the father's not named. So what did I say? I'd fill out the birth certificate. Unnamed father. We don't know who it is. But he had a father. So those are the possibilities. Joseph, no father, or another father. So then the next question is, any possible name, any possible idea? Are we just left with that? And what we find is the word Pantera, P-A-N-T-H or T-E-R-A. It means panther, basically, in Greek and uh, even gets adopted into Latin. Jesus, son of the panther. But if you take it as a name, Jesus, Ben or Bar, would be Bar Pantera. Where does that occur? Well, where it really begins to arise is much earlier than people think. Later, Celsus, the Roman writer that argues with uh, origin, this is in the early third century, he does talk about uh, Jesus being uh, the son of a Roman soldier, and he gets into all the gossip and says, isn't it true your mother committed fornication? Almost like he's addressing Jesus. And he says he had talked to Jews about it and he had learned this. So that's quite a bit later. If that's all we had, you know, people have suggested that Pantera is a, per, a pun on virgin. I've heard that. Yeah, Parthenos. Notice they don't really even sound right and the letters are different other than the P. You know, Pantera, Parthenos. Uh, which means virgin in Greek. But peop you'd be surprised how many people will go to that, even scholars, my colleagues. When my book came out, a couple of scholars reviewed it, and they said, doesn't Tabor even know that that's very clearly a pun on Parthenos, virgin? He's son of the virgin, but we're going to call him son of the panther because the panther's a lustful animal. We're making a joke, in other words. Mm -hmm. Well, of course I know that, but I also know when it originated in 1850, and I know the scholar that began to suggest that. So it's very, very late. Nobody in antiquity, and these are Greek-speaking people, ever said, oh, Parthenos, that's actually a pun, you know, and it's making fun of the virgin birth. So this is a very late opinion in the 19th century by German scholars. It would sway you if this was historically attested. Well, if it was very early, yeah. Right, but right. guess what we have? This name crops up early. And in the Talmud, it's negative. Jesus is regularly called Jesus, son of Pandera, Pantera. It gets spelled differently. And he's a sorcerer and a deceiver, and he leads Israel astray. But the name is still there. And they're not making fun of the name like it's a pun for, you know, they're, they're quoting it like this is the guy I'm referring to, Jesus, son of Pantera. But we've got early texts. And it gets really interesting. They're in a collection known as the Tosefta, which is as early as the Mishnah. And these are early traditions of late 1st, early 2nd century rabbis that talk about Jesus in Sepphoris. So we're getting geographically and chronologically close to the second generation. Sepphoris is just four miles to the north of Nazareth where Jesus grows up. And rabbis in the streets of Sepphoris are calling him Jesus, son of Pantera. That is very strong to me. And they're not saying anything negative. Actually, in two of the citations, they're saying something positive. One has to do with a rabbi named Eleazar. And he is bitten by a snake. And Jacob of Shekin... Some people even think it could be the brother of Jesus, Jacob of Shekin. Shekin's a little town very close to Nazareth. I don't think it is because James was killed in 63, and this is much later. But whoever it is, uh, he heals him in the name of Yeshua uh, bar Pantera. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. This is positive. Now, the rabbis who didn't like Jesus begin to object and say, well, he taught some very strange things, and you shouldn't really use that name for healing. But the point is the healing worked, you see. So it's not a curse in any way. Well, this Eleazar drops dead in the story. And then his enemies say that disagreed with him letting that name be used for his healing. They say, oh, he dropped dead. It's because he 
had somebody pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus was known as a healer. But this is so close, and it's just a by-the-way thing. You know, Yeshua bar Pantera said this and that. The other one is totally positive. There's a question, very interesting uh, question. What if someone wants to give the wages that had to do with prostitution to the temple? Maybe they ran a brothel or whatever, and they ask Yeshua ben Pantera. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, they ask another rabbi named Eleazar, and he quotes Yeshua ben Pantera. He says, well, I heard a very wise saying once about that very question from Yeshua ben Pantera. Again, you notice the by the way. You know, I'm just quoting a halakhic authority, an authority on Jewish law. And he says, uh, you should take them and build toilets because from filth will go the filth. Well, it's kind of a wise saying. And yet the enemies, because Jesus had enemies at that point because the Nazarenes are spreading and the, the, the groups are beginning to split more. I call them spitting cousins. They're not wanting to kill each other at this point, but they're like, well, that's not my group. You know, you got Qumran, the Dead Sea group, you got the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and you got the Nazarenes. This is like late first, early second century, a lot of competition going on. But he quotes it like uh, this is, it's a good halakhic ruling. Halakhic means, you know, it's good sound, and it's kind of wise when you think about it. Yeah, that is filthy money, so build a toilet with it. It's a joke. It's actually... One of Jesus' funny jokes. I love it. It's not in the New Testament. I wish it was. So we got a name. And they began to wonder, well, why are they calling him Jesus, son of Pantera? It's nothing to do with Parthenos. We know that. That's much later, 1850, I think, is when somebody suggests that. So what is it? So I have a picture here. This was suggested by Adolf Deisman, early uh, 1900s, 20th century, famous book called Leek von Osten, Light from the East. It's translated into English. And it's all about inscriptions that might have to do with early Christianity. Inscriptions, archaeology at the turn of the century. And he puts this picture in the book. Right, and, right uh, here, Donson? Yeah. Oh, wow. And it is a soldier, Roman soldier, with his head knocked off, unfortunately. It's a tombstone. And I'll re you can see the Latin letters at mm -hmm. the bottom. And I'm not saying this is Jesus' father, but let me tell you what I do know. Okay. Here's how it translate, translates. This is an officer who died. It's found at a Roman camp on the Rhine River, a place called Bingen today. I've been there several times and investigated this. The statue or tombstone is now in a museum, the Römische Hall Museum and Bad Kreuznach, Tiberius Julius Abdes. Abdes is probably servant of uh, Pantera. So his name is Abdes Pantera. Tiberius Julius is the emperor. So why does he take the emperor's name? Because if you serve 25 years, you, uh, you can uh, lose your slavery or lose your debts or all kinds of advantages. Mm -hmm. And he has served for 40 years. He died at age 62, and he's from Sidon. Okay, Sidon is closer to Nazareth than Jerusalem is. Jerusalem's about 100 miles as the crow flies. People think of Sidon as way up north. Look at a map. It's not that far, probably 80 miles or so north. Well, that's still pretty far. What would that have to do with Jesus? I'm interested in a soldier age 62, he's of the first cohort of the archers, and can we figure out any chronology, which I do in the book, and I even more in my new book on Mary, I found out much more from several trips after I wrote the Jesus Dynasty in 206. And it turns out that this particular soldier from Sidon fits exactly the chronology of the life of Mary and Jesus. And somehow he ends up first in Vienna, uh, stationed there, and then he ends up on the Rhine River, and he serves a total of, uh, what did I say, 40 years? 40. 
40 altogether, dies at age 62. Now, what's the site on connection? It's really kind of interesting. In Mark 7, you got the oddest passage. And I'm not saying Jesus visited his father. But, you know, Sidon's mentioned a lot in the Gospels. Like, crowds from Sidon came down. When Jesus condemns the local villages of Capernaum, and, you know, he says, Woe to you, Capernaum, and woe to you, this city, and all around the Sea of Galilee. He says, it'll be more tolerable for the people of Sidon and Tyre than for you. You know, mentioning them positively. But anyway, in Mark 7, it says he entered Sidon. He goes into a house and he comes out of the house. Nothing reported. So he knows somebody there because he goes into a house. I'm not necessarily connecting that to Pantera. I just want to point out to people that if I say Sidon, they go, oh, come on. Well, that's really far-fetched. That's a long way away. He would never go there. Yeah, he went there, and crowds are coming. He goes all over the Decapolis as well. He speaks to Roman soldiers. So, could this be the Pantera, Jesus' son of Pantera? Now, there's another piece of the puzzle. I've got a few minutes. I'll try to make it really quickly here with your segment. Um, what did the early church fathers say about this Pantera, like Epiphanius particularly, and a couple of others? So be in the 4th and 5th century. Because that name is getting circulated, and people are going to say, why are you calling him son of Pantera? Did he have a father? And they say, oh, no, no, that was a name in the family. Some say the family of Joseph, some say the family of Mary, that that is a family name of either Joseph or Mary, or maybe both, because I think they might be related you know, little villages and mm -hmm. both of Davidic descent and so forth. So that tells you that they're taking it as a real name. They're not saying it's slander. They're saying, look, the, that name comes from the family. It's just a misunderstanding. It's like saying the Pantera family. But now we got the name in the family. So what would I do with that? Because I'm not Epiphanius. He believed in the virgin birth. I don't. I'm wondering... And here the chronology fits in an amazing way, and the geography fits. So this is a theory. Remember I said I would fill out the birth certificate, Father Unknown. Right. You're I would not, not put Pantera. I would, right. But I've told you some things about the name that are very early. Right. Now, Kelsa says he's a Roman soldier. Whoa. And he doesn't say it's rape. Forget the rape thing. He doesn't say that. He says that the soldier slept with Mary and she allowed him into her bed, but he calls him a soldier. Now, what if, here's my speculation, that Mary meets and is in love, and this is not anachronistic, ancient people fell in love. Right. Marriages are arranged, and she's with a boy named Pantera, that's his name, his family name. It could be a cousin, it could be a nephew, but it's in one of the families of Joseph or Mary, or both. There's an ossuary in Jerusalem. I don't think it's to do with him. But people go, well, that is not even Jewish. Come on. You know, how would there be? There's an ossuary in Jerusalem that is called Joseph, uh, son of Pantera. And I think it says father of Drusus or something. So I don't think it has to do with this. But it shows the name is used mm -hmm. in Jerusalem in the first century. It's a it first century ossuary. It has connections to Jewish Jewish thinking and so forth. Right. So it's a Jewish name. It's in the family. So what could have happened? This is speculation. She falls in love with a young boy. May, if we go by this chronology, he would be a little bit older. She's maybe 14. He's maybe like 18 or so. She does get pregnant. A woman's decision to sleep with somebody, you know, is hers. I'm not going to judge her either way. But Matthew seems to know something about this because he names four other women, Tamar, Rahab, Bathsheba, and so forth. He won't and, even name Bathsheba, but either yeah, way. Yeah, 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 Son, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Wife of Uriah. <laughs> but it, it, he's kind of signaling, I'm going to tell you a story about how Mary got pregnant. Now, if you read Matthew, not Luke, Luke expands it into Mary, but you read Matthew, it just says Joseph found out she was pregnant. And he was told in a dream, it's, quote, of the Holy Spirit. That can mean it's God's will. Take her and, and he didn't expose her. So he t took the pregnant girl and married her. The parents probably arranged the marriage. They said he's 
you know, he's prosperous, he has a home, you should go with him, you're a young girl, you're kind of, you know, and maybe they didn't even know she was pregnant. Maybe only Joseph knew. He's the one who found out. I don't know that the parents ever knew. So this is the secret of her heart. I trust her. And then in 4 BC, the Romans send three legions down. They exile all the people in the Galilee. I even think Paul was exiled during that time. You know, Jerome says that he was exiled, also his family, to Tarsus. What if this young boy got taken up and impressed into the Roman army? And then he ends up on the Rhine River. Just speculation. But I think what we can say is that it's a real name. It's associated with the family. We do know of a Pantera that's from the region of Sidon. And could this be, you know, the biological father of Jesus? Where is the Samaritan connection to all of this, Dr. Tabor? Well, in the Gospel of John, where we have the charge uh, or really the kind of challenge. Don't call us Satan, sons of Satan. We weren't born of fornication. We know our fathers. That's pretty strong. People try to deny it. They say, well, there's rumors because of the virgin birth. Either way, virgin birth or Pantera, it's illegitimate, you know, as we say, illegitimate. Maybe not to marry, but legally. So there's another passage in John. I just had to look at the reference. It's John 642, where people can look this up. And it says, uh, is this not Jesus, son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Now, I don't think that's as strong as the Samaritan, which I'll get to in a minute. But you could read it as uh, his legal name is Jesus, son of Joseph. But his father and mother we know. Now, remember, these are negative people. Mm-hmm. So we know his father and mother. We, we've heard the name. Possibly. It could fit. You see? I see what you're trying to say. Yeah. Now, to call him a Samaritan, normally it's just a pejorative term, almost like a curse. Like, we're not born of fornication, and you're the son of a Samaritan. And From you have the mouth a of de- Jews. Have a demon. Yeah, right. Jews who are against Jesus. Uh, and So we don't want to be anti-Semitic. No, but no, Jews but who I are mean, against, yeah, there's, exactly. a, there's a history yeah, between absolutely. Samaritans and yeah. Jews I wanted to and point Especially out. in the Gospel of John. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. So it's a bad term. And there, there are claims that the Samaritans also claim to be from Sidon, which is up north. And there's a text. I, I put it in the new book, the Mary book. This is something I've discovered lately. I couldn't believe it the day I found that text. It was like, um, how do I connect Samaritan and Sidon? And then they say, well, we're really Sidonians. We come from Sidon. And uh, so to me, if you put all of this together, I'm still going to put father unknown. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's the proper way. But if you say, but is there a name? I'm going to say, yes, there's a name, Pantera. And it's early and it's not negative. It's just describing what's Jesus. Jesus is a somewhat common name. 5% of Jews had the name Jesus. And you go like, well, what Jesus? Like, which one are you talking about? I say, Ben Pantera. Oh, Ben Pantera. I know him. Family name, you see. And then the Roman soldier on the Rhine from Sidon. Chronology fits. Not sure, but uh, he could have become a Roman soldier. You know, Philo's brother was one of the most famous Roman generals. Philo! The Jew, right, you know? right, and, and, he, and Marcus. The uh, so we we he have really Jews took that all the way too. From what I understand, like yeah. he even kind of forsook his Jew Jewish customs in a way is what I heard. Yeah. But I wanted to mention something and ask you in this vein, and I don't want to stir you off track. No, that's basically when you say Roman soldier. Mm-hmm. I really think, and I say this because me, my ignorance, mm-hmm. and I really didn't know this, that it was commonly understood. Rome accepted everyone. And I don't think people quite get this. They think Roman means ethnically a Roman. Yeah. No, they were a mishmash of everything. So it's possible, just speculating here, that this man, Panthera, came from a, a Samaritan city, or I'm throwing it out there. I'm not even trying to say he was a Samaritan, even if that was just a pejorative term. Yeah. My point is, he could have been a Jew. He could have been a Samaritan. He could have been any ethnicity because they could have joined the army. And in fact, if he was a servant, as you mentioned, this guy's working his life mm-hmm. and loves what he's doing 
to the point he goes 40 years, he probably didn't have to go 40. He could have right. gone 25 and been freed and would have been a Roman citizen. So Yes, he got his citizenship, which is huge. Yeah. Right. It's really interesting. And I think all kinds of debts are forgiven and you get other kinds of privileges for voting and deciding things. It's major. Now, also, remember, let's take the Samaritan point of view. Who did they say they were, even if some of them are from Sidon, which we have a text on that. Um, they said we're from the northern tribes of Israel that were exiled and we stayed in the land. The Jewish side is, no, 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 you were imported. You're Mongol people. You're not ethnically part of us. But what if, uh, you know, from the Samaritan point of view, they would claim ethnicity in terms of not Jewish, Judah, but the people of Israel. So then you would have an interesting case. This would go, this is kind of interesting to think about. If this is historical, imagine Jesus is half north, half south, in, yeah. a, in a way, okay? It legit, like literally. It brings historical. the tribes together. It brings the 12 tribes together. At and least in their ideology. It potentially, and I don't know if this goes back to Jesus, because Matthew has a strange, don't go to the Samaritans, don't go to the Gentiles, but yet the other ones have him saying good Samaritan stories. I mean, it's, you know, we don't know, but it's interesting to think he's pretty Do you lenient. know how positive he is on Samaritans? Right. The big story you just mentioned that everybody knows, it's even the Good Samaritan Law in every state in the country. You know, we have our Good Samaritan Laws. Mm -hmm. But remember, who's the one who came back and thanked him when 10 were healed? The Samaritan. The Samaritan. And you start looking up Samaritan, he has a positive view of Samaritans. Now, what's the deal with Matthew saying, don't go? Is it just first to the Jew, then then he's kind of like, it's not a pe pejorative against Gentiles and Samaritans. Uh, Matthew 10, where he says, do not go in the way of the Gentiles, do not enter any city of the Samaritans, which contradicts John 4, right. uh, clearly. They're two narratives. I mean, the, the, Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the woman at the well. No, there's Samaritan, no. very positive. Uh, Matthew's a whole nother subject. Um, I'd, I'd have to speculate on it. I, right. I think he he could have the idea that you're gathering, he calls them the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Messiah, he wants him to be the Davidic Messiah. And Isaiah 11 says he will join the two tribes together. Right. Judah and northern Israel will no more have enmity against each other. So maybe he has something like that going. But then at the end, he says, go and preach to all the nations. So it right. sounds like a Paul thing again. Mm -hmm. So I hope sometime we can talk about that, whether Paul might have thought the nations that he was reaching were actually Israelites in some way. So another subject for another time. But uh, I, I would not throw out the Pantera. I think it's worth thinking about. Um, you know Morton Smith. He was my good friend, and he's been slandered by many people and supposedly maybe forge the secret gospel of Mark, which I do not believe. I know for certain he did not because I knew him when he was doing all this and when it came out. And I think it's been shown now that he didn't. But he does put a little, he was quite a little devilish guy in terms of snide remarks. And he did say in his book, Jesus the Magician, he refers to the Pantera statue, refers to Deisman's book. And he says, could this be the only true relic of Christianity on the planet? Interesting. Just a passing line. And yet, you know, Morton is thinking, well, who knows? I never got to talk to him about this, but after I got onto this, I noticed it in the book. So, so that's the story on Pantera. Real name, possibly the father, Jesus, son of Pantera, and maybe not some you know, negative Roman soldier, but a Jew who got impressed into the Roman army and forced to serve, maybe as a quasi, well, uh, he's not a citizen, so he get, you know, he's not necessarily a slave, but if he's forced to serve, he's sort of a slave. Uh, we just don't know, but I think it's worth uh, pursuing. Thank you.